So we've been asked by a, um, a Kiwi viewer what this RDS thing's all about and how it works. So this video is going to be on an A to Z on how to install RDS. So what is RDS? What does it even stand for? It's Rotary Drive System. So it's totally different to what we normally do in planes, um, where we have a normal servo and a horn and a push rod and another horn working a service a surface. So we have no push so rods be... hanging out the bottom here, or well, we won't have even when it's installed. So we'll explain the whole process from where to go, how to hinge it, how to install the RDS for our Kiwi brethren. These are the components that make up an RDS system, rotary drive system. So instead of our normal servo that we're all used to with a, with a normal arm on it and a push rod and all that, we now have this, which consists of an adapter, which sits on the splines, and the servo now turns in a rotary way. That engages two plates. So when we make an, an, an elevator, the elevators are composite layout, so you've got a top and bottom skin, and inside that elevator is a internal structure. And that internal structure incorporates like a spar, hinging. What do you make the hinges out of? Same thing we make the plates out of. It's two mil compressed carbon fibre sheet. I don't know if you can see that. Mm -hmm. Looks quite thick in the video, but it is only it's two, two mil. mil. Yeah. The hinging is 2.4 mil um, brass tube with a 1.5 mil piano wire up the middle of it, which captures the hinge point. So that's the hinge. Mm -hmm. So that, as you push the piano wire through, you can see it going in the hole of the hinge. So the trick is to line that up, and then that goes in, and that becomes your hinge. So there are three hinges on, on this elevator. One, two, three hinges, and then the RDS system. So this mounts in the tail plane, and it'll go in between those two plates. And the way that works, so again we've got our two plates down in there, there'll be a hole in the leading edge of the elevator. So as this turns, and you're confined by the um, hinge, as that turns, it makes the elevator or the surface go up and down. And there's zero or slot or movement, isn't it? It's a really um, there's zero positive way of... Yeah, so as long as, as long as the distance between these plates, these, um, the piano wire that we use in this RDS is 4.78 mil or 3 16th um, piano wire, and we make these plates 4.7 mils apart. So when we CNC cut these ribs, it makes very accurate spacing between these two plates. So when that goes in, it's it's like it, it's it's firm but there is zero slop so wherever that is that is just locked it's not going to move so there's no slop no flutter in the system so that's what make they're the components which make up an rds system and you're using so the hinging you're using the same material the same stuff okay so, so you get sheets of that off ebay it's um two mil compressed carbon sheet and we cut that on the um, CNC router. We used to, you've, you've made some hinges in the past out of... Um, we did experiment with aluminium, aluminium ones of these, which seemed a good idea at the time, but we found it wore very quickly. So the hole, so aluminium hinge against a steel pin, this hole elongated very quickly. So not a good idea. So now everything's made out of this um, carbon sheet and we just have had zero problems with that at all. So these um, RDS adapters, rotary adapters, we get from Servo City 
You can get all different sizes. They've got different splines. They've got a spline in the bottom. I think the modern ones are just have a, 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 a splines cut into it without this insert, but they're changing it all the time. So you'd have to go see. So where is that link? That's surveycity.com okay. and it's rotary drive components and they've got a whole range of these sorts of things with different um, splines in the bottom and different uh, diameters in the top for, for various size um, piano wire. They are changing all the time what's available and they're refining their system so you've got to go look but this is what we've got at the moment these ones. So the way you install those, very simply, you just take off the normal um, servo arm, which we no longer need. So this is a 5645, the old 6 volt high tech servo, and they were a 24 pin spline. So we had to get 24 pin splines on these things. So they just quite simply, push onto the spline and the kit comes with a, um, a, a little um, hex that fits and that just screws in and bolts it down. The normal servo grommets go in like they normally do with the um, little brass insert underneath. So that becomes, and the kits also come with a, the, um, a locking screw, which goes in the side. So these things have got enormous force because it's compressing around the piano wire. It's not just a grub screw. It compresses it. Once they're done up, they just never, ever come undone. So that's the servo. So the first step to installing a surface is to open up the hinge spots, hacksaw, cut into those um, where the hinges are. You can get that spacing off the trailing edge of where it's going. And then you can open that out with a knife. And you can see the hinge hole, which is which corresponds to where you're... Which is this. That's the gap we're opening up from there. Perfect. So, onto a rudder, that's what we've done here. So we've got the three hinge spots opened up, our piano wire, and then with your spare hand, you can get all this and line them up. Thread them on as you push it in. You can see it come through there. So we have three hinges on our surface. You can like open up the, the slots even more to make sure you've got a you know, full range of motion in there. So next step. So the rudder is going to go into the back of the, the fin. And you can see where it's the hinge, the corresponding slots are uh, in the rudder post. So there are lightning holes and then there are three hinge points and right down the bottom is the slot where the servo will go a little bit fiddly just lining those hinges up into those the three of them just getting them into the holes so the idea is to butter those butter all these three up with epoxy making sure you get epoxy you know into the hole into the little um, dimples in there so and when you say butter them up we use epoxy with a um, the, the 413 powder which just makes a, a thickened 
like a glue. Epoxy, high sole or whatever chef preferred poison. Yeah. And also into the holes, like fill that up with epoxy too. And then put the whole thing in there and let it set. So this is where you can get the fit right. So you can get the alignment, you know, nice alignment against the, the um, trailing edge. Make sure it fits top and bottom. And then when it's like that, tape it in and just let the epoxy set. Job done. That's how you do all the so surfaces. Flaps, you... ailerons, elevators, everything. So. Same procedure. Yep. Here's one we prepared earlier. So this has been set up yesterday. So this is now hinged in there. You can pull the pin out. When you pull the pin out, you see that the hinge points now are well and truly stuck there. You can see that, yep. And the hinge point in the, the, the um, piano wire can go back through those holes. That's very important for the next step. Okay, why is that so important? You shall see. <laughs> Patience, my pretty. Meanwhile, the dog just keeps licking her feet. Hey, Georgie. What we've got now is a servo mounted in the trailing edge. If you have a look on this side, you can see there's a purpose-made hole, if you like, with mounting holes for the servo. There's one for the rudder here. And this side, we've got the servo already mounted with the RDS adapter on it. We get our bit of um, piano wire and we bottom that out. So you can see where that bottoms out. Most critical for making these things work well is to have your hinge point and you mark where the hinge point hits the RDS and that's got to be the center of our bend. That's probably the most critical thing to make this thing smooth operations. To do our bend we get our wire with the middle of the bend point marked in it and we're using one of these wire benders, I don't know, I think they're great planes or something like that so set the point in there we're not too worried about it because we're going to trim this afterwards and we do a bend we have a jig made for the light for the um, Mustang so this angle here is the correct bend on the um, Mustang we're looking for we use about 13 mils up and down with this amount of bend, we get maybe up to 20 mils, so we can plenty of movement there, but we wind it back down with rates. Yeah, plenty of room for adjustment. So we've got a jig which shows the bend angle to bend these actuator rods for the elevator and the aileron are the same angle, and we have one for the flaps on that side. So we're looking to bend this bit of wire to that shape. So then it's just a matter of bending and um, bending and checking. Bending and checking. Yeah. Oh, you've done luck. you've done this before. So that's what we're looking for. And then we'll just trim this off. This has got to be about 30 mils where it comes back into the. Um, so that comes back in there. So we come back about 30 mils, 40 mils, something like that. Not critical as long as it's within those plates. And this end we do so it just bottoms out in the RDS adapter. So the, the critical point is to get the bend on, the hinge, on the hinge line. That's what we're aiming for. So we've bent the um, little actuator rod. It's a it's a tight setup this because we want to make the elevator servo is removable so the bend is very close to the RDS adapter but we still have to get this hinge line meeting the bend that's the critical thing that the hinge line 
and that bend on the same point. So that's what we've done. We've mounted the servo, and then that is how it works. Um, one critical factor of this is if you can imagine this um, bend, when it first moves, there's a lot of movement because it's that way. When it moves just a little bit at the beginning of around neutral, there's, it's a lot of movement. When it gets up to the top and it moves, there's very little movement, which is an effect negative expo, which is not what we want. So to get the feel of this right, to overcome that geometry, we run like something like 60% expo, which seems a lot, but it, it gives you the right feel. It gives it a feel of about a normal 30% expo. So with that 60%, it feels right. So all that's left to do is put the surface on. We've had to dig out a little spot in here for that actuator to sit in because it's so squished up on this thing so that just pushes on in between the plates just like it's a very firm fit but not ridiculous then we put the hinge pin in when we do the final fit what we'll do is cut a little tiny groove in here for this bend over pin to go into and it'll just be embedded in there little tiny bit of epoxy and a touch of paint so it'll disappear but if you ever have to get it off again it is possible to dig it out and pull it out so that's in there and away we go to the field nearly <laughs> to find that.